This week we're getting the garden spring ready. Marcus gets his paints out. Paul makes an easy dinner. Marcus takes a walk down historic Windsor Street in Uxbridge. And Paul reveals how he overcame a major life obstacle. Now let's get started. We will! Yay! Are you hungry for dinner right now? I know I am. Okay, so for tonight's menu, we have 600 grams of chicken thighs, which I marinated with salt and pepper, um, aubergine, asparagus, and lovely chips that we will deep fat fry later. So why don't we get started? Okay, so I have the walk going um, and we are going to put it into the walk. Uh, let's have it on first. So we put it skin side down first, like so. It will make a sizzling sound. That's exactly the sound you want to hear. And now we could crank up the heat. And now we generously season this with pepper and salt and whatever other herbs you want to put in. Okay, so let's see whether we need to flip. Oh my god. Yes, we do. So right now, I just flip the chicken thighs and I will put it on this baking tray and put it into the convection oven for about 25 minutes for, for 180 degrees. Okay, I think it is time to turn the fire off, take it out and then put it into the convection oven. Okay, I am whisking the eggs for the aubergine and then I'm going to dip it in flour and then the breadcrumbs and then I'm going to put it into the deep fat fryer. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's cut the aubergine. Nice even slices. Nice even slices so that they cook properly and evenly flour, eggs, crumbs. Okay, now I am cutting off the asparagus and only using the tender parts. I will keep these bits as a soup so that it can flavor the soup when I need it next time. I'm gonna put these in the freezer now. Still waiting for this oil to heat up. I better start drinking, right? Okay, so the, so the light's gone off, so it has reached its heat level now. So I'm gonna slowly drop them in, and they will sizzle. Now. This aubergine is loving the oil. Aubergine always loves oil, but I think because I've never deep fat fried it before, it's, it is really loving it. Um, I can't wait to tuck in to see how this tastes like. While the aubergines are getting cooked, I am going to sear the asparagus on this griddle pan. 
So I need to make sure that the griddle pan is hot before I put it on. Okay, so now I place the asparagus on and waiting for the sizzle to happen. I think these aubergine slices that are battered are done. So let's plate them. Last one. And there you go. Pouring in the chips, lowering in the chips. Okay, I think that these asparagus tips are done. So let's plate them on a plate. Chicken is done, so now let's take it out. So now let's plate the chicken. Okay, these chips look done. Okay, so I'm gonna put some salt on the chips. So there we have it, we have the chicken thighs, we have the grilled aubergines, the asparagus, and the lovely chips that I just brought out. Um, I don't know about you, but I think that this is time for tucking in now. Cheers. No. It's a big week in Rotterdam as the Eurovision Song Contest rolls into town. The semi-finals take place on Tuesday and Thursday leading up to Saturday's grand finale. We have a Eurovision special next Saturday, so please join us then. Just off Uxbridge High Street is Windsor Street a short road populated by older shops. Home to St Margaret's Church, which dates back to the reign of King Henry III in 1245, it is the oldest building in Uxbridge. Outside the church remains one of the town's old water pumps. It is believed Uxbridge was supplied with piped water until around 1800, and wells were sunk around the town. Once home to Uxbridge Police Station, Windsor Street is a throwback to a time long gone and a reminder of an easier way of life. Today it has several pubs, restaurants, hair salons and independent shops and is like a step back in time just yards from the bustling town centre. Back to the times of Henry III. Walking down Windsor Street, you know, it really is like a step back in time. So many independent shops, local bookshops, such as the uh, the bookshop here, Barnard's. And although the Queen's Head pub has been closed since March 2020, it is still one of the most exquisite buildings in Windsor Street. Let's hope it reopens one day soon. If you haven't had a chance to cut the grass yet this spring, it might be time to get a wriggle on because it's been growing pretty fast. And that's what we're doing right now.
Well, I think that was a pretty good job. And of course, Paul did all the work again. Well, someone had to work the camera, didn't they? Okay, that's a cut. <laughs> Well, Easter may be well over by now, but that doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of fun with bunnies. And as you see, two of my friends are with me here today, and they are really in for a treat, aren't you? Well, no response there, but hang on a second until they see what is coming up, because today I have got some rather special, they're not pens as such, that, well, they're sort of like icing, icing pens, if, if you like. So today we're going to be icing bunnies. Now, not to worry, because it's not you. No, no, no. We're going to be icing gingerbread bunnies. Okay, so we've got a selection of black, yellow, red and white. And it's basically just a matter of having a little bit of fun. So we'll take one bunny out like that and oh I I've got a feeling that I want to give give this one red eyes where do you think the eyes should be around about around about here perhaps and so let's ooh, let's start and a nice big smile this is something that you could do yourself or with kids and of course the fun of it is is that afterwards um, you get you get to eat them so there is bunny number one let's be a little bit more adventurous this time I've got a feeling this bunny wants to wear a black hat so we're gonna go like like this and get lots of the the black icing all over the top of this bunny's ear. We do have one bunny left. And I don't know, I'm gonna make this this a funny bunny. Um, well, they're all, all sort of funny. This one's going to have a strip the whole way down its middle, as if it's going to be wearing a shirt or a, a suit or something, because I'm going to give, give it buttons. So that's looking pretty good, I think. And the first one... Uh, it looks pretty basic, so there's only one thing to do, and that's to uh, break it off and tuck in. Mmm! Delicious! Mmm! God, it is nice. Stuttering affects 70 million people worldwide. It's more common in men than women. Stuttering tends to run in the family. Public figures that have had stuttering include King George VI and U.S. President Joe Biden. Stuttering is a disability that has affected me. I had the stutter for a very long time since I was in childhood. I first received treatment for stuttering when I was 13 and it lasted until I was about 18 years old. I hated the feeling of it. I was made fun of in school. I was made fun of at home 
by friends, by family. It isn't something that I would um, want anyone else to experience. I was able to get a diagnosis from a language teacher back when I was 13. She recommended a treatment called speech therapy when we had to enunciate words, we had to do some verbal exercises and say specific phrases and it did help me overcome the stutter after many different years because practice makes perfect. I think that family is very important in helping the child or adult deal with stuttering. It's important not to criticize them and it's important not to jump in and finish the sentence for them and it's also best to try to avoid any social situations and any pressure because this will exacerbate the situation. Here are some tips to help reduce stuttering. Practice speaking slowly. Avoid trigger words. Try mindfulness. I didn't really have a good childhood dealing with stuttering. My mom and dad didn't really know how to deal with stutter. It was something that she wanted me to stop, obviously, because she didn't want me to be different. I think growing up, you don't want to be different. You want to fit in. And I think it was just her way to make me not feel like an outcast, but she didn't know that that wasn't the best course of treatment. I would have wanted a more supportive family upbringing where there would have been more encouragement and understanding and empathy. This isn't something that I really enjoy speaking about because it's all hidden back in the back of my brain somewhere. I think it's very important that people understand that you are not alone. It's quite challenging to deal with, but I know that with the right support and the and the right guidance from trained professionals and supportive friends and family, you will get through this just like I have. And I want you to be inspired by that. There can be dark times, especially when you are stuttering. You don't know how long you will be afflicted by this. But fret not. I don't think you should worry that it won't ever go away. In order for it to be managed properly, you need to seek treatment and you need to go from the darkness to the light because there is hope that you will overcome the stutter. If you're struggling with this, please contact one of these groups now and they will be able to provide you with more support. Well, that was quite a show and I think Paul was very brave for sharing his stammer story. Now I'm glad Mark has taught me something new about Uxbridge. Well, it's our Eurovision special next week. We can't wait. See you then. Bye.